Hello everyone, my name is Abdul Samad. I am director.
Ok, hello mọi người ơi, mọi người không biết là có nghe được uh, có ông mình không? Uh, thì webinar của chúng ta sẽ bắt đầu trong 3 phút nữa ha. Uh, mình sẽ bắt đầu vào lúc... Um, thử ạ. Ok, so hello everyone. So if you just join us, uh, this is uh, accelerating mobile game development with AI. Um, today webinar will be hosted by VGDA and also FinDi Game. Uh, we are going to start in about two more minutes uh, to allow some time for others to join in. Hey, hello everyone, hello others. Uh, are you already here? So um, we can start the webinar. Uh, at first, um, are you already here? So I think we can start uh, our webinar because it's already 4 p.m. Okay, I see hello, you. Yes. Hello. Okay, hello. Um, it's an honor for us to have you here today. So, yeah, I think we can start now and I will uh, introduce for everyone about our webinar and so uh, our agenda. Mm, okay, I will speak in Vietnamese a little bit. <laughs> Is it okay? Okay, um, so, uh, xin chào mọi người và chào mừng mọi người đã đến với webinar số 19 được tổ chức bởi Hiệp hội Phát triển Game Việt Nam với chủ đề là Accelerate Mobile Game Development with Gen AI. Thì uh, em là Phương, hiện tại đang là thư ký của Hiệp hội Phát triển Game Việt Nam và cũng sẽ là MC cho chương trình ngày hôm nay và đồng hành cùng với mọi người trong chương suốt chương trình. À, cảm ơn mọi người rất là nhiều đã dành thời gian trong buổi chiều à, ngày thứ tư để tham gia chương trình cũng như là lắng nghe những chia sẻ từ diễn giả Anders à, và hy vọng là sau buổi webinar này thì mọi người cũng có thể có được một cái những cái kiến thức thú vị bổ ích cũng như là những cái uh, 
tips hay là uh, có những công cụ AI mới nào đó uh, sau sau chương trình này có thể tìm hiểu và ứng dụng vào trong công việc của mình thì chúng ta sẽ đi qua một chút về cái agenda của chương trình ngày hôm nay uh, trong khoảng 15 phút đầu của chương trình sẽ là phần chia sẻ của diễn giả uh, phần sharing này thì sẽ là slide uh, okay. và sau đó thì chúng ta sẽ dành phần lớn thời gian cho phần Q&A của mọi người bởi vì là trong uh, webinar lần này thì ban tổ chức nhận được rất là nhiều câu hỏi vậy nên là ban tổ chức cũng quyết định là Ok, phần sharing mình có thể uh, đi qua overview thôi và đến phần uh, Q&A thì có thể giải đáp thành nhiều câu hỏi của mọi người rất có thể uh, để mọi người cũng có thể từ những cái câu trả lời đó có thể ứng dụng được ngay vào phần công việc cụ thể của mình nếu mình cũng sẽ không sharing quá là nhiều bởi vì phần này cũng khá là rộng uh, rồi. Uh, Nếu như mà mọi người muốn đặt câu hỏi thì có thể phần uh, Q&A ha À, thì mình sẽ nhìn thấy cái biểu tượng hoạt động ở dưới góc bên phải màn hình của cái biểu tượng uh, tam giác vuông tròn ạ thì khi mà mọi người ấn vào thì sẽ có phần Q&A phần hỏi và đáp đó thì mình có thể ấn vào đó và đặt câu hỏi giúp em ở trong uh, phần hỏi và đáp đó thì ban tổ chức sẽ ghi nhận lại và giải đáp cho mọi người ở phía cuối chương trình để tránh trường hợp là mọi người ghi vào chat thì nó sẽ bị miss mất câu hỏi Uh, ok, so, thì mình sẽ bắt đầu cái phần chia sẻ của diễn giả ngay sau đây để tiết uh, kiệm thời gian ha. Rồi, uh, ok, I first, so I just introduce to everyone about the topic as well as the agenda and also you. Uh, so I think uh, uh, we can start with a little uh, more introduction about you. Uh, so uh, can you say hi and share some feelings when you guys are today. Yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me in this webinar. I'm really excited to speak with you guys. So um, I'm, like before beginning, like I, I, I just want to say that I'm a very big fan of Vietnam game developer like community. We have learned that we have learned a lot and we have made a lot of friends in past few years. So uh, we are very much like impressed and motivated uh, after seeing your work. And uh, today I'm really excited to share our learning and experiments that we uh, did with generative AI tools. I'm very happy to share what we find it uh, like helpful in our asset development pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Uh, so we will because uh, um, like we want to make sure that everyone can all understand and follow the content of the webinar so we wanted we already have the recordings of your presentation and like the vietnamese subtitle um so now i will share my screen okay mọi người ơi thì bây giờ mình sẽ bắt đầu đến phần chia sẻ của diễn giả ha và bởi vì phần chia sẻ này của mình bằng tiếng anh nên là ban tổ chức cũng mong muốn là mọi người có thể theo dõi cái bài chia sẻ này một cách tốt nhất nên là cũng đã xin diễn giả cái phần recording để tạo cái việt nam tạo cái sắp sai bằng tiếng việt cho mọi người à, để theo dõi cái phần chia sẻ của diễn giả ừ, thì bây giờ em sẽ share cái phần này ha à, sau đó thì mình sẽ đến phần live Q&A ừ, okay. so, can you see my screen hello everyone My name is Abdul Samad. I am director and co-founder of Fames Games. Uh, we are one of the top game development and publishing studio from Pakistan. Uh, we have around 1.2 billion downloads around the world. Uh, we have produced 20 plus hit games in different genres. Our team is around 130 plus people and uh, it's divided into uh, publishing and development uh, teams. So, uh, Here are the little de details about Pakistan games. Uh, there are 200 plus game development studios in Pakistan, employing around 2,000 plus people. The annual revenue of overall gaming industry in Pakistan is uh, $500 million uh, with, a, with a growth rate of 30% annually. I'm really excited to uh, share our experiences uh, of using generative AI tools in our game development, publishing, and asset production pipeline. So these tools not really helped us in achieving the efficiency, but it also uh, reduced our development cost a lot of times. 
and uh, it, it, it helped us in achieving the quality and accessibility of our games. Uh, the use cases of these, of these generative AI tools uh, is not limited to game ideations only, uh, but it, 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 it can be used in graphic generation, uh, graphics enhancement, and localizations of our games. So uh, overall, by using these tools, it really helped us in speeding up our overall process and, and achieving the quality uh, that we were looking for. So further uh, in the presentation, I will show some, some, some examples and experiments that we uh, did internally, and it, it really helped us in uh, achieving the efficiencies and uh, performances. So here is an example of graphics enhancement. Uh, we're using these generative AI tools that really helped us in uh, beautifying you know, our in-games uh, avatars. So uh, you can see the beautiful mermaid character and the basketball player uh, enhanced and beautified by these generative AI tools just by using prompts. Uh, before uh, these tools, what we used to do is uh, manual work, like just take the render of all these characters and um, add details in Photoshop, like enhancing the clothes and facial features and facial expressions, of course. Uh, but these generative AI tools, they are they are really helpful and they are very quick. You can see like 90% efficiency in case of uh, uh character and 40% efficiency in the basketball character. So th this is all by uh, avoiding the manual work, the manual hours. Uh, these generated AI tools help us in achieving uh, this. So in the next example, here is the uh, like icon of our games. So on the left side, you can see uh, the Tom character beautified by uh, generated AI tools and also uh, the fighting. You can see the, the, the beautiful uh, like muscles and the details added uh, by these tools. So it, it really helped us in achieving the uh, conversion rates uh, in, in in store listings and this screenshot refinement you can see the exaggerated muscles and beautiful lights so uh, this treatment has been achieving good conversion of the screenshot so this is a very helpful use case uh, you can generate mood and expressions and it's very easy uh, by using generative AI tools so you can make make your character look like excited or happy and frustrated, whatever the use case is. So in, in the example shown, you can see we tried uh, a, an excited face of a basketball character and an angry expression of the lady kicking the other one. So uh, these, these icons uh, helped us in bringing good conversion as compared to the otherwise flat face icons. Another important one is style transfer. It's very easy to experiment various art styles with these uh, generative AI tools. In this example, it's from realistic to cartoonish. Generating concept art by using prompts and different AI models can be a very effective and uh, a useful use case. Uh, it can it can help you convert your thoughts by using prompts into into visuals very quickly and very fast way. So uh, we try to make, in this example, we try to make uh, like two variants of a wrestling character. Uh, you can see the first one is angry and aggressive and the other one is more funny. So uh, th th this is very helpful actually, like you can, you can convert your thoughts into visuals very quickly and, and it helps you in, in making effective decisions by seeing uh, what, what, what is going to be your actual product. So here's an example of post creation. Uh, just use the prompts and different AI models to create the pose of characters and it saves a lot of manual hours. So here is the little detailed example of uh, graphics generation by using AI tools. Uh, on the left side, you can see an icon of a stickman character doing flying kick. The AI tool we used is Bing and we use Photoshop uh, for the final touching. And the prompt we use is uh, 3D Stickman Karate Fighter, white color, flying kick pose, advanced lighting, high quality image, 16K render, black headband and aggressive eye expression. So, uh, and we use Photoshop to, uh, just to add the blue background 
and the inner glow to uh, the stickman character and just to make it look like an icon so here is an example of uh, visualizing the concept uh, like uh, using ai tools to convert your sketch into renders just to visualize it better and the localization use case it, it's really powerful and effective uh, in this example you can see uh, the original boxing character and we use different prompts and ai model models to uh, to create the localized variations for each of the region that we target uh, from left to right you can see the african and the arabic and the chinese and like thai and the french boxer so uh, we use these icons in different geos and we targeted the specific audience by using these icons and we uh, we, we achieved a very good conversion rates and by using these tools uh, it, it it not only saved over time but uh, helped us achieving in our conversion targets also so in another example you can see uh, uh, a, a soccer character wearing different uniforms so um, we did it by using generative ai tools and avoiding a lot of manual work adding seasonality into your images is also a very good use case uh, like uh, in, in this example you can see on the left side there is a there is an empty arena and by using prompts we we added a christmas light and winter themes into into this arena and there can be a lot of examples uh, that how you can use these uh, these tools to add uh, seasonality into your into your still images and 2d backgrounds so uh, in this example uh, let me first uh, play the video so the upper part here it it, it is a clip of a fighting movie and the lower part it is the animation generated by uh, the ai tools uh, what we did is uh, like for for our fighting games we uploaded uh, 3d characters and the, the rig the rig version of 3d characters into the tool and we just input an, a video sequence to them so uh, the final output was a uh, was an animation asset uh, we just uh, over animated just did uh, a few like cleaning stuff like 30% of the time of, of, of the effort tools and the final output you can see uh, it created an, 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 an animation that can be used in, in games so by, uh, by using the video clip that we uploaded let me, uh, let me play it again so that you can have a better look at it So those were the few examples and the experiments that we did internally and we got very good results in terms of uh, achieving the efficiency and the better conversion rates. So uh, the future surely belongs to AI and uh, these AI tools are rapidly evolving. So it's on us to stay updated so that we can, uh, we can use them more effectively into our asset development pipeline. So uh, what we did internally is we created a task force, like uh, a, a mix of development, marketing, and uh, our artist team. And they continually uh, keep learning these tools and keep learning the, finding the ways how we can use them in, into our production pipeline. So uh, keep on experimenting, keep on learning. And one important thing that I want to mention here is that uh, we have to make our team realize that these tools are here to help us, not to replace us. So uh, we can use these tools as our weapon just to increase our efficiencies and accuracies uh, in doing our work. So um, they can be game changer. They can, they can really help in speeding up our asset development pipeline and they can make our games more accessible, more localized and, and optimized for different geos of the world like never before so uh, so that's all from uh, my side of hearing.
and thank you so much for uh, listening so uh, i can be reached by using this uh, qr code and if you have any questions please uh, go ahead thank you hi everyone i'm elizabeth kilkovska or just lisa because it's a bit simpler okay uh so this all this sharing of uh, efforts uh, from today webinar and i think we will jump into the q a session right now because we have uh, received a lot of like question from the registration form and it, i think it's a very good question uh and i want you to like give them some advice for like case by case um uh, i think i'll share the screen ok mọi người ơi thì phần chia sẻ của chúng ta uh, của diễn giả chúng ta thì uh, ở trong buổi lần này cũng khá là ô tầm quan và ngắn gọn như vậy thôi uh, thì trong buổi webinar lần này thì ban tổ chức cũng rất là mong muốn có thể giải đáp được thật nhiều câu hỏi cho mọi người à, bởi vì là cũng nhận được đến gần 40 câu hỏi à, gửi về cho chương trình và chương trình cũng sẽ chỉ có thể khoảng 15 câu à, để trả lời trong buổi ngày hôm nay thôi Ở ngoài ra trong những câu ngoài những câu hỏi mà mọi người đã gửi về cho chương trình thì mọi người có thể đặt câu hỏi ở trong phần hỏi và đáp của Google Meet thì uh, mình có thể thoải mái đặt câu hỏi bằng tiếng Anh hay tiếng Việt ha thì mình cũng sẽ dịch lại và gửi cho diễn giả và để cho phần Q&A của chúng ta được diễn nhanh và không bị tốn thời gian cũng như là giải đáp được nhiều câu hỏi nhất thì mình sẽ làm hoàn toàn bằng tiếng Anh và sẽ không có phiên dịch lại ha mọi người yên tâm là cái phần uh, recording của của webinar cũng sẽ được gửi về mail cho mọi người nên là mọi người cũng có thể xem lại cái phần uh, chia sẻ cũng như là giải đáp của diễn giả OK, so I think we will um, move into the Q&A session with the first question. Yeah, like um, it's about uh, can AI replace humans in marketing or monetization? I think are you already because um, yeah. So uh, so sh should I continue answering the question? Yeah. Uh, sorry. So should I continue answering the question? I, I just yeah, yeah, you can can me answer the question. Yeah, yeah okay, okay. And yeah, okay. So uh, uh, Vietnamese. So we just uh in like as I'm answering in English. So then people, I think we we can we can follow. Yes. Okay. So um, uh, can AI replace humans in marketing? Yeah. Okay. So uh, AI like. Uh, when we uh, a year before when we started uh, adopting ai into our processes and sops uh, this was the question like from our team as well and there is a i believe that it's a very popular question like whenever any any company or any process want to incorporate ai into it so uh, for sure like ai can help us in like can help anyone in speeding up their processes like asset development or code development or whatever the use case is but it surely cannot replace humans because uh with humans like uh it, it comes creativity and a personal touch like specifically if we talk about marketing and monetization and it comes like with branding and creativity and a personal human touch so humans will be required to get a get get a like human touch to the marketing efforts so ai can have like speeding up the process but the but, but actually it's it's the human who is like using ai as a weapon like it's it's up to the the capabilities of that person that like how it can leverage the ai to speed up its productivity so it cannot replace the humans but it can help humans big time just to achieve their goals in a speedy manner in a more effective manner yeah so I think the, the final point is that they cannot replace human, right? Just uh, um, our weapon to speed up everything, to speed up uh, uh, the task or something like that. Yeah. Uh, okay, vậy thì chắc là em sẽ quyết nhanh một chính thôi. Thì sẽ là, uh, chị diễn đạt có trả lời là đến cuối cùng thì AI cũng sẽ chưa thể làm cái công cụ có thể thay thế được con người 
và đặc biệt là trong marketing và monetization thì nó cũng sẽ cuối cùng nó cũng sẽ chỉ là một công cụ để mà chúng ta nó như là một cái vũ khí để chúng ta có thể um, speed, speed up gọi là làm nhanh chóng hơn cũng như là cái ưu cái công việc uh, của chúng ta một chắc cũng gọi là tiết kiệm thời gian hơn thôi. Okay. So, uh, I think we'll move to the second question uh, that they ask about the effective um, advertising channels for game and also how AI can optimize the campaign in Google, Facebook or TikTok. Yes, so uh, for the first part of question, like what are the effective UA channels, advertising channel? So it depends upon game genres in case to case and the and the geos that what you want to uh, like uh, target. So uh, certain advertising channels works better uh, for certain uh, genres and certain geos. So uh, there is no uh, generic answer, but uh, because it it, it 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 depends a lot on the stage of also and the geos and the genre of the game. But the mentioned tools, Facebook, Google Ads, and TikTok, these three are. Are, are definitely very effective and, and one of the top advertising channels for every publisher's choice. So uh, moving towards the next part of the question that how uh, does the AI assist in optimizing campaigns? So uh, what like if you see the evolution of uh, advertising channels like we two years back or a year back we used to have uh, CPI campaigns like we have to uh, manually cluster the lookalike countries uh, to make a CPA campaign, and we have to give it a cost per install target uh, so that 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 campaign can meet the target. So uh, now, from uh, a year ago or two years ago, you can see that there is an added layer of AI on every type of campaign. If we talk specifically about the ROS campaigns, return on ad spend campaigns or the ROS optimized, optimizers or TROS campaigns. What are these? These are like the AI layer above the traditional CPI campaigns. So on the on the advertising channel side, they, these guys are already doing this, like like trying to automate the, the, the campaigns as much possible as can. So now we can we can clearly see that ROS campaigns are working better as compared to the CPA campaigns because the AI learn and they try to find out the right target audience and right people so so that you know uh, it can achieve the ROS goal and like and and in other few examples like uh, they also have the uh, you know the the, the look like audience segments and 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 the real time bidding so so all these technologies like they are AI based and these channels are also uh, are 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 already uh, like using it in their technologies so what we can do is like uh, in my opinion but and what we did internally in our studio is like we used to like uh, gather all the data from all the advertising channels uh, for our campaigns and then we we would try to learn uh, like the and, and try to run the predictive analysis that what our upcoming game will will perform based on the previous data that we have. And this kind of analysis can be done by AI. And there are a lot of tools that can help you do this analysis and run your campaign effectively. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think, uh, as we can say, like there are three campaign. Is it uh, three campaign that we can apply AI on, like CPI? Uh, Rust and localization. Is there any like um, campaign that we can apply for? Yeah. So so all these uh, platforms have CPI campaigns and Rust campaigns also. Yeah. So that was three three uh, main campaigns that we can apply AI to, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um. So I will just leave in some points in Vietnamese. Um. Oh, thank you. Với câu hỏi là với câu hỏi thứ hai này thì bạn có hỏi là có cái những kênh nào mà quảng cáo hiệu quả cũng như là AI có thể um, là tối ưu các chiến dịch quảng cáo ở trên các nền tảng Google, Facebook hay là TikTok hay không? Thì um, diễn giả chúng ta có trả lời là với ý thứ nhất thì sẽ phụ thuộc vào cái việc hiệu quả hay không thì sẽ phụ thuộc vào dòng game uh, cũng như là cái 
gọi là khu vực địa lý ở đó thì mình sẽ có được những cái channel khác nhau để mình áp dụng và với kẻ và ba kênh Google, Facebook hay là TikTok thì đều là những cái top channel rồi nên là chúng ta sẽ đều phải cần ứng dụng cả ba cái kết hợp thôi à, và vậy thì thứ hai thì có miễn là cũng trả lời khá là chi tiết và từng cái kênh tên mà chúng ta có thể ứng dụng à, AI vào tuy nhiên là sẽ có ba cái kênh tự chính mà mọi người có thể nghiên cứu à, đó là về CPI campaign, grass campaign và localization à, okay. Um, so I think we will uh, thank you so much for your advice because uh, I think it's very detailed and everyone can like research more about it and apply. Uh, for this third question, uh, how long until most 2D animators are replaced by AI? It's kind of this day we live. Uh, question number one. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it looks like the similar uh, one to the question number one. But uh, one the a specific thing I want to add in this question is like there is a lot of stuff and lot of advancement when we, when we talk about two D stuff uh, for the generative AI tools. Uh, like for example, uh, like if you want to make a sprite animation for your uh, one of your character, you just have to like create a base character and a t-pose character and few poses all only and then you upload to a appropriate like data model and and train that model and you can you know get the unlimited uh, kind of sprite animations that you want so uh, the the making like uh, 2d sprite animations is very easy uh, by using generative ai tools so uh, there is a lot of manual work that can be replaced so for 2D animators, so if, if you were doing like by doing it manually before, so you can use just like the right tool and you can do it like so in our experience, there is a tool like scenario dot uh, scenario AI. So by using that tool, you can you can make like very good 2D animations for your director. And 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 also like uh, you can it, it's it's a very useful use case to make turnarounds also. Like if you if you uh, like make only front pose of your character, and you can uh, you know by generative AI you can generate its side pose and the back pose. So it, it's also possible. So there is a lot of advancements when we talk about 2D animations, and we can leverage it. So uh, we cannot set a timeline that how fast these animators will be replaced by AI, but you know it it all depends on that animator if you want to be in 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 business i would advise that start using these ai tools right now so that you can be more productive and you can do more in in less power in less time and more effectively yeah um uh, so um I have one more like side question for this like uh do you have any tools for uh, animators do you have any recommendation or any name uh, yeah. yeah so uh like as i mentioned there is a tool scenario so uh, you can use that and it's very good for 2d animations yeah. for 2d assets okay. cool. uh, okay, thì, uh, với câu hỏi này ha, thì diễn đạt có rồi nó cũng khá là hơi hơi giống một chút so với câu thứ nhất thì đúng là công cụ thì sẽ vẫn là à, cái mà hỗ trợ chúng ta thôi và có một cái ý nữa là diễn là có gợi ý cho chúng ta có thể thử dùng một cái tool là tên là scenario thì mọi người có thể research và thử ứng dụng cái tool đấy vào thử um, nghiên cứu xem là có thể được ứng dụng được vào trong công việc của mình không ha Ủa, uh, you know, a lot of questions ahead <cười> I think we have to speed up a little bit. Okay, so how AI enhance game production quality and optimize performance in production and marketing? Yeah, so uh, like as we uh, covered in the in the presentation deck as well. So uh, I mentioned the tools and uh, and the use cases like from starting from like concept generation and then graphics generation and then enhancing the graphics. And, and then the localization of those graphics. So all these use cases, like uh, they can, uh, they, these can help us like in optimizing performance in, in production. And as we discussed for marketing, like 
uh, the localization thing like it, it's very important like you can you can uh, you can enhance your and and make your uh, your your 2d asset uh, like localized for every geo that you target so it can be done very easily and and it's not uh, like if we talk about game production so it's it not uh, like limited to asset generation and asset optimization it can it can greatly like help in uh, in in writing the game code also scripts also so it will give you very valuable suggestions like and so so all these uh, use cases can be used to uh, optimize the performance and overall in in our know, production and the marketing side i think it's mostly focused on uh, and it's very helpful in localization eh? yes all right so uh, mm, i wonder like before the localization part uh, in the ideation part or in um, like some kind of uh yeah i think i have from the ideation and graphics are setting the data for for marketing campaign versus yeah, how can we like intend yes for the, yes yes it's it's also very effective for the ideation part also like from like you, you can give the data set and you, and it can give you like if, if you if you are working in a specific type of games you can uh, tell the ai model about your games and 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 based on it it can generate new ideas for you and like right now it cannot do the comprehensive marketing analysis that that it can see that how what games are available in the market it cannot do that but the data you feed uh, it can create like a lot of uh, ideations and a lot of new concepts uh, based on uh, the data you produce it so it can yes it can uh, greatly help in the ideation part also Oh, really cool. So, so with this part in which tools you usually use for for the aviation or the localization? Can you success yeah. some like name you, you use for like? Uh, can you success some some AI tools to you use for the aviation? Yes, yes uh, for the aviation, uh, the one and only ChatGPT. And the ChatGPT four, so it's very uh, effective. Cool. Okay, I got it. Uh, thế vậy thì trong cái phần mà chúng ta có thể uh, nâng cao và cũng như là tối ưu về mặt production và marketing thì chúng ta có thể như uh, diễn giả có chia sẻ thì đó, từ bước ideation tức là lên ý tưởng uh, hay là có những cái concept mới thì, thì một công cụ rất là quen thuộc với chúng ta đúng không? thì đó là ChatGPT và mới gần đây nhất thì là chat GPT 4 à, và đối với khâu về marketing thì cái mà AI có thể giúp chúng ta tối ưu hóa được nhiều nhất cũng như là diễn giả cũng đã nhấn mạnh ở phần này đó là phần localization tức là chúng ta sẽ bản gọi là bản địa hóa cái game của chúng ta cho từng vùng mà uh, chiến dịch của chúng ta hay là game của chúng ta sẽ nhắm tới ví dụ như là Việt Nam hay là US hay là uh, Ấn Độ hay là thì chúng ta sẽ cần gọi là thay đổi cái content cũng như là cái visual chẳng hạn để tối ưu uh, cái game của mình cho từng vùng okay. rồi uh, ok I think we will we'll move into the next question uh, how does AI contribute to player engagement and retention mm, I think it's very good question uh, yes yes it's a very good question so uh, the use cases that it helped us really in like uh, for, for the for the level based games like it can really help uh, so it can help in increasing the engagement like for example uh, the, the the best use case of it is like the dynamic difficulty algorithm so like uh, so there are certain ai tools that that can help us in like uh, designing levels so that uh, you, you know it can it can adopt the uh, so according to the player's difficulty so if, if so it, it, it works like based on the win streak and the loss streak so you can present the next level to your user so that it can uh, uh, user can remain more engaged in your game so uh, for the engagement i think the the adoptive level design 
based on the difficulty and the user performance. So uh, th th this can help us. Generative AI can uh, tools can help us. You know. So the, one of the most basic thing, the first step to do is like you can you can ask Chat GPT or the bot AI just to design levels for your game. Give it give, give it uh, like uh, the core core game loop. Of, of your game, explain about the core game loop and the main character and overall story of your game, and then ask it to like make the flows. Like for example, if a user, you know, based on its its performance inside the game, uh, like win streak or lose streak, so these AI tools can help in in, in give you a very good level progression uh, for better engagement. And once the engagement is better, you know, retention comes along with it. So I think like the one short answer is uh, implementing the dynamic difficulty adjustment into as the game progress is the best use case of generative AI that can help in uh, improving the engagement of the game. So uh, it depends uh, a lot on level design and so the color of the game. Yes, exactly. So now the the tools we use that I think we can provide the data for chat GPT to ask. Yeah, it's it's mostly like uh, chat GPT and uh, bot AI. So these two are very good in like giving you uh, all the scenarios that you can run on. So because like uh, as of now we didn't experiment anything uh, inside the game, but but it really helped us in. Uh, in, in doing the game design document. So uh, on the design document side, you know, we use this tool to make all the scenarios, all the possible ways how user can uh, interact in over again. I'm so sorry, because I hear actually the, the second tools we use uh, beside ChatGPT. So which one? Yeah, Google Bard, Bard AI, B A R D Bard. Mm. Do you have the link? So, uh, People can research. Okay, so so I think not be happening. So I uh, will send it to the chat for people to can uh, learn more about. Yes. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um. Okay. Vậy thì với hỏi này thì nhân rằng chúng ta có uh, tức là để mà tăng cái engagement cũng như là của game thì có hai hai cái mà mọi người cần phải chú ý đó là uh, về level design cũng như là core của game thì ở tác uh, giả có gợi ý cho mọi người uh, diễn giả có gợi ý cho mọi người có hai công cụ mà mọi người có thể áp dụng đó là uh, ChatGPT và Google Bard thì Google Bard thì nó sẽ tạo rất là nhiều cái scenario scenario cho mọi người để mọi người có thể lựa chọn cũng như là Uh, xem xét để cân nhắc để đưa vào game của mình Rồi thì uh, đó là những cái những ở trong câu trả lời của diễn giả ha Hy vọng là sau buổi uh, webinar hôm nay mọi người sẽ có thật là nhiều tools để <cười> mọi người có thể research thêm theo những gợi ý của diễn giả và chúng ta sẽ tìm được một cái tools mà hợp lý nhất uh, để áp dụng vào công việc của chúng ta Ok, uh, and Uh, we will move to the next question. Do you have any advice uh, for uh, developers who are considering to integrate AI to their project? Yes, so uh, uh, we have talked about this already. So, uh, uh, but I, I, would, I can only encourage here that, uh, you know, if, if you are still considering to integrate generative AI into your projects, you are already late, you know, because uh, these tools are really advanced and, you know, they are uh, re really like, you know, uh, the teams of these tools are uh, working like very fast and very rapid and there are a lot of new updates coming every, 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 every while. Like, so uh, we should stay, stay in touch and, 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 you know, uh, explore these tools in, in depth so that, you know, we can, uh, we can we can get better out of it so i can only encourage here that you know you can start it using like right away into every aspect that we discussed and covered into into the presentation there 
So I think uh, you see the chat, the chat because I saw a question uh, that you we is kind of related to this question. Like he want to uh, use the AI tool, but it's hard to fix the timeline of a big project. I think um, it's kind of they want to apply, but they don't know how to start. Let me have a look on the chat. Yes, definitely. It's very tricky to uh, to create a fixed pipeline in big projects because there is there is a lot of like research going on on these tools and and you know every tool cannot fit into every kind of genres every genre of the game and every tool cannot you know uh, it cannot create it, it cannot be a case that you fix a pipeline and then you implement into all your project it depends on case to case and like uh, you and and you know use cases of the game that's all so uh, what we try in house is we we have created a research team like from developers and marketing team and uh, and uh, the artist team and they and they you know continuously uh, try to explore these tools and trying to make a process that how we can uh, incorporate uh, these tools into our gaming projects so uh, trying to create a, a fixed pipeline as of now we were not able to crack it and i think it's not possible so we have to cater it like case to case and I also think that um, there are many AI tools developed recently. So the thing that we have to update it and like the fixed pipeline or fixed progress to apply AI, I think is kind of hard. So we have to update constantly uh, and change due to our process or our project. Okay, so I think we just have a, uh, we still have a lot of questions. <laughs> and um, I, I want you to answer the question here. I saw a lot of questions related to the, um, how to apply, like I think how to have a, ability, like, uh, the benchmark or the evaluation process um, when you apply AI. So I want to put this question first. We yes, <laughs> definitely. So, uh, yeah. So what we do, like, I, I, I will be very open to share our internal process that what we, we are doing it. So uh, first of all, like the chat GPT, like it is connected to the internet and you can, you can research that what kind of tools available or, uh, or for, for a specific you you are looking for and once you uh, establish that this, this tool can help us in in achieving our target so you can you can start exploring tool and and i would strongly suggest to to have a call and and have a session with the tool developers because every tool that is available right now they have a business development team also so you just contact them and ask them to give you like a, a specific specific answers to your questions and give you the overview and it can help you like better understanding uh, like like what what is the power of a tool and how you can how they can help you in achieving it for your uh, targets so uh, what we do is like once we figure out that uh, these tools are available and this tool is can may be useful for us, we contact with the business development team and have a in depth session on that tool, and then we uh, start exploring that tool. And most of the time, like it, it requires a lot of effort, but this effort is it's worth it. It really worth it because once you establish that this tool uh, is uh, a specific tool is good for your uh, asset production pipeline so it it saves you a lot of time a lot of time so it's worth spending time in research 
and in a collaboration with their business development team so that you can finalize the right tool for your products and after finalizing it you can see that it will save you a lot of time so i think the top part to research yeah and to decide which one will apply to the team so to with your team at pc game do you have any like process or uh, when until the time you uh, explore that AI tools and new research, or and you like test testing. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, yes, sir. I got it. So once we uh, finalize our tool, that these tools can help us in in um, in specific things. So what we do is we uh, like assign a specific like our internal system is we adopt the OKR system uh, for for uh, like. Uh, target orientation and the performance uh, evaluation in OKR system, like we uh, we give them specific key results and specific target that spend this much of time on this tool and come up with the results and your suggestions. So this is the next step. So once, we, once you finalize the tool, then uh, you can assign these targets to your teams like uh, give give them specific targets in the in their OKRs or the targets or whatever system that you you have adopted, and make them responsible. Like your team responsible just to give them uh, just to like uh, come up with the results. So uh, what we did in what we tried initially is like we just keep on suggesting our team do this or explore this and they they sometimes they do and, and most of the time they just listen and they forget and they go to be, go back to their regular routine but we made them accountable and we give them specific targets and we score them based on based on that and we give, give them specific like hours to spend on that tool and and it really uh, you know give good results okay Thank you so much for a very detailed uh, answer and advice. Um, so I think I know that there are a lot of questions we received from the registration form, but um, I think the time is not allowed. So uh, we will jump into the question, which uh, is directly asked by the audiences here. Um, can you follow the question with me? Uh, I think it's an icon activity in the right at the corner. And if you click on that, you will see a Q&A section. People like ask a question on that section. So can you see it? Or I can put the question in the chat for you? Yes, please, please put the question in chat. It will be easy. You can have some time to read the question, and I think we will answer three more questions. Yes, so uh, there is an ethical issue with the with the, with these generative AI tools. So uh, all the all the assets and the content that is generated by AI, you have to uh, you know uh, pass it through a funnel. And what we did internally is we we, we see it like like that if, if if it is not infringing any IP content and and if it is like ethical and there is uh, and it it complies to all the rules and the age group that we are uh, that we are targeting. So uh, we only use uh, it if, if it passes all the tests. So because uh, with the generative AI tool, you know, uh, there is a challenge that you have to, uh, you have to humanly test it and humanly, uh, you know, try it and see that if it, if it, uh, if it is acceptable and if it is, it, it complies all your internal uh, rules. So only then you can use it. Because uh, otherwise, if you uh, if you do it blindly, then there can be legal issues and copyright strikes from the stores. 
Go ahead. Awesome. Uh, there are one more question I just put on the chat. Uh, that they, he asked about simple eyes want to create an uh, icon for speed boosting item in my game. Which prompt I should use and how to effectively describe AI? I think they asked about the keyword. Wow. Yes. So, can you can you send on the chat, please, on the chat section, please? Yeah, yeah. I I, I put it on the chat. Uh, right. Okay. I I will send it. The second. Okay. So for uh, yes, for creating the icons as of now, like what we uh do is for for creating a pose, just use the Bing. So Bing is very effective in creating pose. And after that, the graphic enhancement, there is a tool, it's called Leonardo. Uh, Leonardo. So just use Leonardo for enhancement. It's very uh, you know helpful. So to create the pose, it's, uh, it's like uh, Bing. And to refine it and make it like more appealing and add more details, use Leonardo AI. And uh, it's not always about like creating an icon from scratch from generative AI. It's like most of the time it, it works like you use your game's character and uh, you know have a render of it from the 3D software. And then you use some generative AI tool like Leonardo I mentioned to add uh, textures and details on it. So it also works very well when you upload your uh, characters and your poses to uh, the Leonardo AI and it can you know really help in uh, enhancing like all the details so it saves a lot of manual work okay uh, so uh, I think uh, here in the chat uh, a, a, a problem that uh, many people concern about is copyright and I think you want to have uh, some insight or idea from you. Yes, for the copyright, as I uh, as I mentioned, that we cannot rely on all the on all the assets that are uh, generated by AI. So we have to do a human test also. So before uploading it to your game, you just see it by yourself and and with an expert in your team that if it complies with the uh with the with the all rules that you have like with the consistent with the age group consistent with the ip regulations and you know stuff like this because uh, all the content that is generated by ai uh it is like uh, they, they use trained models uh, either you have to train a model by using by giving your data or they already have a trained model and these trained models are based on a lot of data and they they may look look like some ip uh so that you know it can bring you in problem if you uh, do not do a human test before uploading it okay so so i can see yeah so i can see another question here someone was asking about the about the video that i mentioned and it was asking about the tool yes so um the tool we use uh for for uh, making animation assets out of the uh video it, it's called deep motion so, uh, so we used it. So for the deep motion, you know, uh, there will be a cleaning effort required for the animator. So uh, because it's it not hundred percent usable in your game, uh, so you have to like give you like half an hour or something based on the length of the animation that you uh, that you got from there. So and and after that cleaning work, you can use it in your game. So, so can you put the link of that um that tool is into your chat for yeah. yes i i just explained it so you know, the ai tool that we use uh so i think we will have the last question for this webinar because uh the time is running out uh okay the very last question do you recommend any source or document or like article or any books writing about ai 
songs. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it, th there is nothing like this uh, exists. But uh, what we we do is like we like internally we keep on discussing that um, you know when there will be a lot of AI around. So there will be a new kind of jobs and it and people will say then ah oh, look I'm a prompt engineer I can write good prompt so uh, the person who can write good good prompt will be the winner because you know you have to your you have to use your creativity uh, and your like clear instructions uh, to get the good graphics out of uh, out of these generative AI tools. And one one last thing that I I want to mention, and I would strongly advise that keep keep a keep a good touch with the business development teams of these tools. So they will they will train you a lot. They will train you by, by themselves uh, that how effectively you can use their teams. Like for example, like uh, a few weeks back when uh, we were in game developer conference in San Francisco, uh, we had a lot of meetings with the uh, CEOs and the uh, top management of these tools, and I would specifically mention and I would specifically shout about the tool that is Scenario. So we met their uh, CEO and their business development team as well, and these guys are really helpful. And these guys, you know, they they, they always try to learn the use cases from 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 all the game developers around the world, and then they try to enhance and then they try to. Uh, like modify and update their tools as per the expectation of game developers because if we exist uh, we will give them uh, the requirements and they, you know if we exist they exist so you know uh, we have to really push them and we have to keep good contact with them to learn more about them because of the first hand information about the tool that they can provide us thank you uh... You have to the point you have to keep connection with uh development business development team right yes, okay right. thank you so much for all your answer and i think it's very insightful for us and what you share i think definitely will be a base and also a motivation for everyone to start applying ai to their team and to their project thank you so much and uh, do you have any last words or sharing with us before we end this webinar today? <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, I, I would really appreciate all the enthusiasm that you guys have, and uh, I would really uh, like to ask, uh, like to appreciate the all the efforts that Vietnam gaming developers that that they are doing, and you know we we met with a lot of gaming companies and. A few few years back, that a uh, few years in in last two three years that I already mentioned in the starting of the presentation that we made good friends and you know, uh, what I would I would like suggest is and what I would say is that let's keep collaborating the Pakistani and Vietnamese game development companies and let's learn from uh, each other and let's continue the webinars uh, and the knowledge sharing sessions like this. So that we can we can grow uh, together. So I really appreciate and re and, and really uh, you know uh, thank you for uh, having me. And uh, you know it's it's very nice talking to all the game developer community uh, from Vietnam. So it's very nice talking to you guys. Yeah, thank you so much, and I hope we will have a lot more like opportunities opportunity to sharing uh, both about Pakistan and Vietnam game industry. Um, and hope someday we can meet uh, in Hanoi, Vietnam. <laughs> okay. So. Probably, yeah, probably very soon. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And so we come to an end of webinar 19 with the topic of celebrating mobile game uh, development with Gen AI, organized by Vietnam Game Developer Association. Uh, thank you so much. Hope you guys all have a, enjoy the webinar and have fun. Uh, thank you all so much and have a great evening. Uh, ok mọi người ơi, thì đây đây cũng đã là uh, kết thúc buổi webinar của chúng ta ngày hôm nay rồi. Thì hy vọng là mọi người cũng đã có thêm thật là um, nhiều những cái tools mới để mọi người có thể về research thêm về phần AI này. Đây cũng là cái webinar đầu tiên về AI mà hiệp hội 
à, tổ chức bởi vì là đây cũng là một topic mà mình thấy rất là nhiều người quan tâm à, phần này thì webinar đầu tiên này thì khá là overview thôi nhưng mà đến với những cái webinar lần sau nếu như mọi người có request thì chúng mình sẽ tìm thêm những cái speak, tìm thêm speaker cũng như là tìm thêm các cái đơn vị mà họ đã ứng dụng AI thật là sâu vào trong cái quá trình làm việc của mình để chia sẻ nhiều hơn có thể là về ứng dụng AI trong marketing hay là ứng dụng AI trong graphic thì những cái webinar lần sau nếu mà mọi người có request thì chúng ta sẽ có những cái webinar sâu hơn ha về quy trình cũng như là về các cái tool có thể ứng dụng như thế nào thì hy vọng là với cái webinar đầu tiên này thì sẽ là một cái tiếp cận mở cho mọi người về AI của chúng ta cũng có thể nhìn nhận và chúng ta có thể bắt đầu thực hiện research cũng như là ứng dụng các công cụ này vào quá trình làm việc của mình. À, cảm ơn mọi người rất là nhiều và hy vọng là chúng ta sẽ gặp lại nhau trong những webinar lần sau. Huh? Uh, okay, I think uh, we want to have a picture together as we not offline but we uh, online. So if you guys can open the camera, we will have a picture together. <laughs> okay. Okay, three, two, one, we'll have a picture together. Okay. Thank you so much. Um have a great evening. Have a great day. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you.